Let's see if we can do maybe two more questions depending on time here. So that's number six. Number seven says draw draw the major organic product for the following reaction. So I have one, two, three, four, five, Cl. I have H2O and isopropyl alcohol. So something like that. And then I, I basically, oh, I have two questions here, right? Oh, I have three actually, or four. I have four questions here. I have a lot of questions here. So let me just, I'll have to analyze this as quite a bit of, quite a, I mean, I would do, do these two first. And then for the sake of, for the sake of time, I'll skip down to the solution and just explain it to you because um, it's a bit just it's just taking it's going to take a lot longer for us to kind of figure this out here. So it's NaCl and H2O, and then I get some sort of product here. Okay, so let me figure. Let me let me let me, um, let me try to exp let me see what the solution. Let me see what they have solution here. Um, this looks like a very awkward diagram, but let's look at the solution here, and we'll see if this is correct here. So uh, they have here, I'm reacting this uh, kind of um, alkyl group with a chlorine. Uh, I'm going to react it with Cl, with H2O and isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm going to get um, this guy here. So let me think about this problem here. Um... So this chlorine group, so this chlorine group, what it's going to do is first it's going to, again, leave, right? So this chlorine group, I mean, if I'm going to draw the mechanism here. If I want, if I'm adding water to it first, so a uh, water here, as again, this here is a negative charge here. Um, this here is also, this here is also ne partial negative, which means this here is partial positive. So again, this guy here is going to come. And then kick this guy out, right? Or it can wait for it to leave first. So I think it's going to wait for it to leave. Actually, I think it might be an SN1 kind of, kind of type of reaction here. So I think it's going. The first step is this chlorine is going to leave here. So I'm going to get. Sorry. Uh, something like this. I'm going to get a positive charge. Like so, and what it's going to do? It's going to do something called a hydride shift, right? So if a hydride shifts here, I have uh, I have one hydrogen here. It's going to come and come and swap places, right? Swap places with, with this uh, carbocation. Because currently here, I have a um, I have a secondary carbocation cation, but I can hydride shift it to make it a tertiary carbocation, right? This here is a secondary carbocation, and I want to make it a, a tertiary because it's more stable. Element and compounds like to be more stable here. So I get something like, uh, like so. So this here would have my, I would move my hydrogen here. My hydrogen is now here. So it's gonna hydride shift it. So my, my carbocation is now here. And now what I can do is it's going to now uh, react with my uh, water and isopropyl alcohol. So water here and isopropyl alcohol. So again, what it's going to do is again, it's going to come and um, and uh, this this minus here is basically come and attack kind of this uh, this point here. It's a, yeah, this very it's very very attracted to this, right? So let me uh, I think I wrote red here as positive. So this here is the lone pairs of hydrogen is going to come here, and then it's going to make again this compound here. It's going to make this compound. So I have five here, one here. O and then um, something like this here. So this here is a correct solution for number one here. Again, water water could have actually done this uh, th this deprotonation here as well. So you can so you can think of water here um, helping this chlorine group leave. Um, but chlorine here is a pretty it's a decent le decent leaving group. Um, it depends if it, uh, this uh, oxygen here comes and decides to attack here and then leaves it out. And you would get this intermediate first and then you would hydride shift it uh, so that you would get um, 
to get like more uh, more stable carb carbocation so you can get this compound here okay number two is now asking us we have this compound here and then if i react it with sodium chloride and water what, what do i get here so in this case in this case i can't make a carbo uh, tertiary carbocation right so this here is another trick question uh it's trick question of the first one here i'll show you why so i have one two three four five six and then a br here right so again you think of this problem as okay i have nacl here so again, obviously, my bromine here is partial negative. I think I did negative with the blue, right? Yeah. This bromine here is negative, which means this guy here is partial positive. And then I have sodium chloride here, which is Na plus and Cl minus, right? So Cl minus is going to be very, very attracted to um, to this, uh, to this, to, to this, uh, uh, dipole dipole moment here come and kick out the bromine here right so i'm going to i'm going to get here now uh this bond br or sorry bond cl plus nabr right and again this reaction works because chlorine is more electronegative than bromine right you can look at this periodic table here chlorine's above bromine here so that's why it's more electronegative so it's going to kick this guy out. If it was the opposite, if it was NABR and chlorine was already bonded to this, the reaction wouldn't happen here because chlorine is more uh, bond is, is more tightly bonded to this carbon here than uh, than chlorine. Or sorry, chlorine is more uh, 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 bonded or more attracted to the carbon uh, as opposed to bromine here. Okay, so now we have this compound here, and then finally, what we're going to do is if uh, the lone pairs, so we on oxygen so let me again write out my dipole moments again so again i have partial positive here i have a negatively charged chlorine I also have the lone pairs on oxygen right lone pairs on oxygen are going to come here and kick this chlorine out so you get something like this and again you would get first a a uh, carbocation or get this guy here right or i'm writing the intermediates for you as well so you can see what will happen here. So I have a again secondary carbocation that's being created before a uh, before another nucleophilic attack, right? So, so in this case, remember in our last case here we have hydride shift. This hydrogen from this guy here is going to come up and replace, uh, basically swap places with the positive charge here. But if you look here, I don't have a hydrogen here. There's no way it's possible for me to write a hydrogen here because this carbon's already bond to uh, four things. So in this case, I can't do a hydride shift here, and I can't. Um, uh, it can't actually form uh, for uh, form a hydride shift here. However, you can you can do something called a methyl shift, right? So you can actually shift a full on methyl. So this methyl guy here can actually shift towards here. And form a methyl shift, so it would actually create a, um, it would create a uh, a stable a carbocation, right? So let me show you. Uh, I might have to show you a diagram as to how um, uh, how it works here. And I don't, I don't, I don't actually have that much time here. Um, so let's see. Um, it's basically it's basically this concept of carbocation re rearrangements that these guys are that these guys are trying to um, trying it's the, uh, to try to uh, kind of um, help you understand here. So let me think about this problem here. Uh, yeah. So basically, you have again this. this uh, I kind of drew this poorly here. But again, I have uh, I have this here is you can think of it as a tertiary carbon, right? It's bonded to four different things here. So I'm not gonna have again, I'm not gonna have like a a, a, high, a hydrogen here. You can think of a hydrogen here, but why would I move my carbocation to a primary carbocation here? Remember, this here is already a secondary carbocation, right? So this here is already a secondary one. If it moves to the first one here, it's actually higher in energy level. So I want it to actually move down to a third uh, tertiary carbocation. And the only uh, the only way I can do that is if um, my one of my methyls here uh, do a methyl shift and I push this um, I push this away, right? So I push this. I basically bring this up, and then I get something. I'm gonna write here a methyl shift. 
methyl shift. And then I guess this, this guy here was a hydride shift here. And this is just a, basically the reason why we do this is because we, we want to stabilize this carbocation, right? We have a secondary one, it can become a tertiary carbocation. So that I have now this methyl is going to stick up like that and then have one and then uh, one. I, I simply have one here and then my positive charge like so, right? So now, if again, this here is a tertiary carbocation. It's much more stable than a secondary carbocation. Tertiary carbocation. Then what it's going to do is going to, and I, I think, I, think, I, think, I still have my, uh, my, uh, my, my H2O here, right? So with my H2O here, uh, what I can do is going to, it's going to bond to this, uh, to this uh, oxygen here, right? HO here, minus here is going to bond to this guy here. And I'm going to get something like this. So this solution here, they said it's bonded to actually, um, to, to the bromine here. And that is a possible kind of, um, kind of, uh, kind of solution here. So if I had a chlorine here and if it didn't do a methyl shift here, if I said it didn't do a methyl shift, then I could say that, um, I could say that if H2O here bonded, uh, again, I have H2O here, these, this simply just attacked this guy here and I didn't get a methyl shift, then I would get my, uh, my products here, right? I, I would get, uh, the, the product, the solution that I would get, uh, on the left-hand side here. So, uh, it depends on if the methyl shift occurs in this case, it does occur actually. So this, uh, this number two questions, uh, the solution here is actually wrong because, uh, of this methyl shift of, of this, the fact that I can, um, one of these methyls can move up to stabilize the carb, uh, the carbocation here to make it a tertiary carbocation. So in this case here, um, I'm going to say this one, this number two is incorrect here. Um, but I would have to look at number three and four here. So let me just write down and I only have two more minutes left. So let me just quickly, uh, quickly check over the answers for you. And I won't write this down here, but it says here, I have some type of, um, propane with a chlorine group plus bromine with DMF. And then I have one, two, three chlorine with iodine two and DMF as well. So again, uh, this, these two are the exactly the same chemical structures, but I'm adding different halogens with DMF here. And as you can see, uh, DMF again is a very, very potent reagent. And what it does is it actually ignores this concept of electronegativity because of DMF, because it's a aprotic sol solvent. What it's going to do is we know that CL here is above bromine and iodine. So what, if you only have HBr or, or HI here, it's not going to kick out this chlorine, right? The, the electronegativity difference between chlorine and carbon is much higher than the electronegativity difference between carbon and bromine or even carbon and iodine here. However, with the existence of this DMF, um, with this DMF, DMF solvent, what I can do is, uh, remember, this is dimethyl form, from formaldehyde, form, 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 formaldehyde, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that, I just call it DMF, um, but with DMF here, what it's going to do is going to create an SO2 reaction, right, so it's actually going to be able to come and kick out this chlorine here, so basically the, the, um, the reaction mechanism here, what's happening here, is that this chlorine here is going to leave, um, it's going to stabilize first um, with the DMF, it's going to create a resonance structure, so you get something like, um, you get something like this, and I'll, I'll draw this out quickly for you, um, DMF looks something like this. H, I have double bond O, bond N, CH3, CH3. And then what it can do is, again, I, I could it, it basically, I can create a resonance structure here and say that this is here is O minus double bond N, bond CH3 bond CH3 and this here is a positive charge, right? So again, this chlorine here, once it leaves here, it can be very much stabilized by this nitrogen here. So that's why it's going to, this here is going to uh, come and create this, um, uh, it's basically going to act as a, uh, this O minus is going to act as a uh, kind of nucle nucleophile first he to here. And then it's going to form, uh, basically bond with, um, uh, kick out this chlorine here. So I would get Cl minus here. And then finally, bromine then can can come. This is a very very good leaving group. Again, it's very very big. It's not as stable here. Bromine makes uh, can kick it out and make it a good leaving group. So this here is a um, this here would be uh, a correct solution. So I'm just gonna write here, uh, solutions are correct except the second question. 
question. Uh, there is a methyl shift to form a tertiary carbocation. So the hydroxyl group is attached to uh, what carbon is this? This here is one, two, three to carbon three instead of carbon two. So I'm going to say solution here is incorrect uh, just because of that second question here. So that's going to conclude my video. I'm going to, I'm going to start off my second video with this problem here and you can kind of tune in for that in about an hour. So again, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like the YouTube channel, definitely uh, like subscribe and uh, follow, uh, keep your notifications on for me to kind of uh, stream. If you like my streaming, thank you so much. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, again, uh, uh, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and have a